So we've talked a bit about neurons in the past, and remember we said that neurons consist of different um, structures. So for example, we've got the dendrites here. The dendrites are structures which come off the head of the neuron. This is the head, so this whole structure here is the head of the neuron. And remember the head is the nucleus, the mitochondria, the ribosomes, just the normal cell organelles are all in the head. Then we've got this tail. This tail is called the axon. And we also have, on the axon, we have these myelin sheets, which are these structures in white. And in between, with small gaps, the gaps are usually smaller than here. I've just kind of exaggerated these gaps. They're called the nose of Ravier. And I probably will misspell that, Ravier. On the end, we've got the axon terminals. Right? That was the bits that come off like the, our feet almost. Uh, so the axon terminal. So if the head is, if the dendrites are here, the head is our head, then the axon terminal will be our feet, and the axon will just be our body itself, our rest of the body. And what's important is that they connect together, right? So for example, here we have the axon sheets, so the axon terminals of a different neuron. So we've got the axon terminals of a different one, and we, here we have the dendrites of a different neuron. Yeah, these are the dendrites of a different neuron. So we actually have neuron being connected head to tail. We've got always we have axon terminals from one neuron connecting to the dendrites of another neuron. And then the that neuron has its axon terminals being connected to a different dendrite of another neuron. And that's important because these structures here are where we have signals being sent from one place to the next. Right? So you can see they're always connected. This This place here, this area is called the snaps. So a synapse is just a connection between two neurons, right? So a synapse is a connection between neur two neurons, and there's always an axon terminal of one connecting to dendrites of another one. But we need to actually figure out, because this is what this video is all about, is how a nerve impulse can travel from one nerve to the next nerve, how that actually happens. And the dot point says identify neurons as nerve cells that that are transmitters of signals by electrochemical changes in their membrane. So it's actually interesting because it says electrochemical, so electro and chemical. So there must be an electrical part and a chemical part in terms of how these neurons work. And that's where these different parts come into play because I'm going to go over this in a bit of detail now, but in much more detail in the next two videos. But in terms of how this works is Imagine this part here, this is the synapse, right? Synapse was the connection between the axon terminals of one and the dendrites of another. So these are the dendrites here, this part here, and this is our synapse. So if we've got an impulse gun coming down from this one, once the impulse gets to the actual axon terminal, it will release neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters are small chemicals, and these chemicals will bind to the dendrite of another one of another actual neuron. So these are neurotransmitters. And we're going to talk about them more in detail. So neuro for for being a neuron and transmitter for sending one me message on. It's transmitting a message. And once this actual neuron gets there, so these neurotransmitters get towards dendrite, that will actually cause a change in the um, positive charge and that will send a electrical impulse on. And this will then cause a chain reaction, which we'll cover in a second, right? So this electrical impulse is really important because it will cause a chain reaction, which makes sure that the actual um, message gets from here to down to the end of the actual axon. So all this part, for most part of the, the message being sent, is the, electro, the electrical part, like the electrical impulse, is when the actual impulse goes from the dendrites all the way to the axon terminals. But when it jumps from one to the other, that's when you have this chemical um, change. So the chemical part is when we go from the axon terminals to the actual dendrites. That's why it's called an electrochemical impulse. It's a chemical part and it's an electrical part. But we'll cover that more in detail, right? But the, the point being is, we need, because for example, if we have the reflex arc, right, the reflex arc, so we can see here, this is an orange, an orange um, neuron. Here, this is our purple neuron. And this is our green neuron. We have a flame. The flame means we have a stimulus being detected. One neuron will connect. So one neuron will be going towards the spinal cord 
message will be sent to the spinal cord. That will happen through these electrical term, electrical means. Then it connects to one in the spinal cord. So this actual purple one is that purple one here. It's in the spinal cord. And the message will get jumped from the orange one to the purple one using this synaptic um, cleft, this synaptic gap here, which is where that signal will jump over. And then it, once it gets over, it's again, it has to go all the way past its whole axon, which is done for electrical means. Then it gets, gets to the green part, so that terminal, so the, between the green and the orange one, uh, sorry, the purple and the, and the green one. Again, same thing, the, when, when it does jump, it jumps for these electrical means. But once it's jumped, it gets back all down, back, back gets back down to the way in terms of the end of the actual hand through electrical means. And then you're gonna have a motor neuron being stimulated and the actual arm moves away. So there's much quite, there's quite a bit to it, but basically it's electrical and chemical in nature, which is what that says. Dot point says, identify neurons as nerve cells that are transmitters of signals by electrochemical changes in their membrane. That's what all that means. I'm quickly gonna give you a quick demonstration of how all this works. I'm gonna cover more detail in the next couple of videos. But the idea is basically that first of all, we need to look at something called membrane resting potential. A membrane resting potential talks about the difference in positive and negative charge in the compared to if we compare the intracellular, so inside the cell, so this part here, that's intracellular, to the outside of the cell, so the, the outer cell or the extracellular. So we need to compare how many charges there are in the intracellular compared to the extracellular. And basically in the intracellular, there is more negative charge because we have negative proteins and negative phosphates, right? And positive potassium. So we've got we do have positive negative inside the cell, but it's more negative when you compare it to the outside because in the outside is only in the chlorine. So there's negative chlorine and there's some positive sodium. So we do have positive and negative on both sides. But basically the idea is we have a bit more negative in the inside than on the outside. So when we talk about our resting potential, that's a difference in charge. We say it's roughly minus 70 millivolts. So what that means is there's slightly more negative charge than positive charge in the inside, right? So if, for example, it's minus 70 millivolts, it would be inside and zero would be outside. So we're comparing the two, it's slightly more negative. And really mini volts, volts just refers to a difference in charge, right? So again, we're saying there's more negative charge inside than outside. That's important because I'm gonna explain kind of how all this works and I'm gonna cover it in more detail in the next couple of videos. But first we have, remember we have an impulse coming down these um, axon terminals from one neuron. Once the impulse gets all the way to the bottom, we have these neurotransmitters being released. These neurotransmitters were actual chemicals that will activate the dendrites of the, actual, the other uh, neuron. So these neurotransmitters will come down and go on to the dendrite of the next neuron. That will release a sort of a couple of positively charged particles. And this is important because these positive charged particles, this is gonna be the, the impulse, the electrical impulse. So now we've gone from the, the chemical to the electrical impulse. These will go down the dendrite and move towards the actual axon, right? And then they will reach the axon. Now what happens here is, remember beforehand we had a minus 70 millivolts. And at minus 70 millivolts, we have these gates with the sodium potassium gate. And the sodium gate, gate is gonna be closed at minus 70 millivolts. So that means these sodium particles can't get in. It's not possible for them to get in because at minus 70 millivolts, which is a resting potential, that's how it normally is, it's closed. But once these positive particles come, it's gonna be slightly less negative because there's positive, more positive particles there, which means if they it might drop down to let's say minus 55 millivolts, right? So these positive particles have rushed there and it's changed the resting potential. So it's made it into something called the actual potential. And we're gonna cover that more in the next two videos. But what that basically means is now these gates are actually gonna be opening. So it's gonna be, they're gonna be opening, which means you're gonna have these red particles, which are the sodium particles, the positive particles, they can come in. And when they can, when they come in, what that causes, what happens if there's many positive particles close together, right? When there's many positive particles close together, they repel each other. So they, they're gonna go away. They're gonna try to get, get away from the actual other positive particles because positive and positive repel, right? Now they're not gonna go in this direction because remember these positive particles have come from the other direction. It's, it's too much positive in that direction. So you're gonna spread out in the opposite direction. They're gonna be moving towards the opposite direction. So you can imagine some of these positive particles have just come in, are going to flee 
because they're being repelled. And they're going to be moving towards the other side. They're going to be moving past these myelin sheets. These myelin sheets make sure that the positive charge can't leave. It has to go only that way. It can only go that way. And once these positive charges come to the next sodium gate, the same thing happens. At this sodium gate, before it was 70 millivolts, minus 70 millivolts. Now, because there's more positive charge here, it also drops to minus 55 millivolts. And then these sodium gates open again. These red sodium particles will enter. And it'll be pushed to the next side because there's some too many positive particles. And that's going to do it, basically activate a chain reaction. So you're going to have these positive particles activating all of these different chemicals and you're going to have the actual impulse traveling down the axon. That's how this impulse travels. And then once this impulse gets towards the end, you're going to have a calcium channel opening. So the calcium channel opens because there's again this drop in voltage and this calcium channel will activate or release these neurotransmitters and then these neurotransmitters will activate the next neuron, the next um, dendrite of the next neuron, right? So even though I've just really briefly gone over it and there's more to it, there's also these potassium channels and everything else, uh, but for this one I just wanted to talk about the actual way it works in terms of the electrical impulse being sent from one end to the other end, how these sodium gates open, they flood in, that changes the um, millivolts and that opens next flood gates, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But we'll talk about more on that in the next video and also go into a bit more detail in terms of the potassium channels as well. I hope that was useful.